Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and I want to welcome you back to a continuation of this uh, amazing series uh, on Mecca and the search for Mecca that is continued so far based on the fact that the standard Islamic narrative has so many holes that do not match up with the discoveries and other evidence that point to something that is completely different uh, when it comes to Mecca. And with me here, of course, in studio to unpack all of this uh, is our dear brother and friend, Dr. Jay Smith. Dr. Jay, thank you so much as always. Now, you know, Jay, we've been talking about the fact that the standard Islamic narrative, um, you know, when it comes to Mecca, uh, it presents a, 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 an image that is completely different than at least the findings that we've been unpacking. But, you know, I'm going to be the skeptic here. Don't you think people would have heard of Mecca? given its prominence, you know, the fact that it's a, a trade center, the fact that Adam and Eve met there, the fact that Abraham and Ishmael settled there, and so on and so forth? You're being the skeptic. I assume you're being the skeptic to the standard Islamic narratives. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Why am I surprised? Yeah. I, and this is the this is the million-dollar question mm -hmm. that, that the, the Muslims need to answer. Muslims, if you're listening to this, you need to answer this question, what he's asking right now. If indeed this city has existed from the time of Abraham, Adam and Eve, not even just Abraham, but Adam and Eve. So you're talking about right the very beginning of history. If this is the city where Abraham was living there in chapter 21 of the Quran, if this is the city that was the center of trade, north, south, east, and west, the trade route theory that came up in the last century, if this is where your prophet Muhammad actually was born in 570, moved out of in 622. So from 570 to 622, this is where he lived. This is where he grew up. This is where the Quran was received, the first part of the Quran, uh, the, 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 well, actually, the second part of the Quran, the Meccan surahs. If this is the case, then you Muslims are going to have to come up with some kind of reference. You're going to have to be able to support that historically. So the question we're asking today is, historically speaking, can we find this place? Well, to, to, if you want to ask this question, then let's go to history. Let's go back to the civilizations from that time period or even even before. Let's go to the civilization from before because Muslims are claiming that this has existed since the time of Adam and Eve. So every civilization that's in that area should have known about it. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, let's look at this slide because I want to pick up. This is a slide from today. This is uh, we're talking, this is called the historical question, and I want to ask this question. If Mecca is the oldest city in the history of mankind, then someone somewhere in the area surrounding it should have heard of it. And listen, is, that's a pretty simple question, isn't it? Absolutely. Am I it's right for asking that question? It's a fair question to ask. Absolutely. We need to. And here you can see where Mecca is. It's where the, the, the green star is. So let's just ask these different civilizations. What civilizations are we talking about? Well, take a look at this. Keep looking at this map here, and let's just put them up here. And the reason why we're asking this, because the standard Islamic narrative is telling us something about Mecca, and we're asking back, okay, she'll prove it to us. Yeah. All right. So the first one I'm going to start with is this one here, and this is called the Sabah. The Sabaeans, the, we know about Sabah, Sabaeans. Yeah. Uh, they're down here in the south. What this is today, Yemen. That's why I've got a modern. For people who are going to question me, say, "Jay, you've got you're looking at a modern map." Yes, I'm looking at a modern map because I want you to know where we're talking about for today. So I'm. This is just a Google map. I'm nothing more, nothing more sophisticated. We're putting these civilizations on a Google map. And there is the star that we're looking at. That we're trying to see if anybody has heard about this place called Mecca, where the green star is. Sabians, did they know about Mecca? We can't find any reference. What else do we know? Well, the yeah, the Himyadians. The Himyadians are Himyar, just. Yeah. But how do you pronounce it? Himyar. Himyar. Uh, I, I let you do all these pronunciations because this is your area of the world. No problem. Okay. So they, we can't find any reference. If any Muslims can find any reference of the Himyadians or the Sabaeans know about this place called Mecca, please let us know. We haven't been able to find it. Uh, what about over on the eastern side, the Eastern Arabia, all of this area of Arabia? Do they know about this place called Mecca? Nothing. There is not. There is no reference. Dabanagiris that uh, that this guy in 1970s thought was riff reference. There, Dabanagiris was right along this area here. Mo, uh, the, the, uh, the scholars from the 1970s thought that that must be uh, Mecca. They're on the wrong coast. This is not on the western coast. Uh, this is on the eastern coast. So the Eastern Arabians didn't know about this place called Mecca. Let's take a look at exactly where Mecca is. The Western Arabia. So the Western Arabians. Take a look. That is exactly where Mecca is located, right? Right. That's we have right. looked, and this is what Dr. Patricia Corona did. Now, she reads and writes 18 languages, I'm sorry, 15 languages. You and I do not read and write 15 languages. 
Thank God we have people of her caliber. She's a linguist. So she's gone back to all of their documentation, to the Sabaeans, the Himyadians, the Eastern Arabians, the Western Arabians, for where Mecca is located. No reference to a place called Mecca. Isn't that rather odd? It is, indeed. Well, let's talk about the pa uh, patriarchs. The patriarchs then come, and the patriarchs are way up in the north there, but they should have had some type of contact with people down here. No patriarchal reference that we can find. Uh, let's don't stop there. Let's go to the Himyarites. The Himyarites are over here. This is what is the, the central part of what is today Yemen and parts of a little bit of Oman. The Himyarites, there's no reference to Mecca in any other... And, and, and by the way, those in particular are very important simply because if indeed trades was coming through here, they would be the first to know that everything is headed towards Mecca. Why? Because Aden is here, and right. Aden is an ancient city, and all the trade coming across the Arabian Sea would have stopped at Aden and would have made it right through the Himyarites, would run right through the Saba, Sabaeans. They would have known about Mecca. There is no right. reference. What about the Assyrians? Let's talk about the Assyrians. So they're way up here. The Assyrian, uh, we know about the Assyrians because that is the Assyrians are very part of the biblical narrative. And we that's know correct. that they talk all more. That's why we get first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, first and second Samuel. They talk about the Assyrian period. They know about Jerusalem. They know about a lot of the areas that we're talking about the biblical lands. There's no reference anywhere in the Assyrian annals of any place called Mecca. Well, well about the Babylonians, they come afterwards. Look at the Babylonians, they're way up here. Now, can you start to see? I'm starting to make a circle. Have you noticed this? Babylonians know nothing about this place called Mecca, yet they're right up here in the Northeast. They should have heard about it. They should have known about it. They should have had access to it and should have had some type of trade with it. No reference whatsoever. Uh, what's next? Well, let's get even closer to home. Let's talk about Central Western Arabia and the city of Tema. That comes, they are the ones that would have had, if there's any, because that's one of the trading cities. If the traders from Tema did not have any access to Mecca or didn't even know about it. What's interesting is, the Central Western Arabians, Patricia Crone refers to this, they do refer to Yathrib, they do refer to Taif, they do refer to Najran and Sana and Aden and Tabuk. Those are all on the Western Plateau that we talked about in the last episode. Right. All of these are referred to in their annals and in also their trading documents. That's why Patricia Crone was able to refer to them. But they did not talk about Mecca, and yet Mecca should have been the most important one of them because Mecca is the oldest. Mecca is where the Kaaba has always existed. Mecca is where Abraham lived. These are all post time of Abraham. They all come after Abraham, and yet they have never heard of this city. Can you see why this is? Let's and we still want to end with one more, and that's the Persian Empire. The Persian Empire way over here. We'll have one more after this. The Persian Empire, they don't have any reference to it. And then we, and we're and we going to go with the Roman Empire. So you notice, does this trouble you when you're looking, just looking at this map here? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's just very powerful. All of these empires missed it. Not a single one of them mentioned anything. Not one of them have heard of Mecca. All of these empires, they bring it. I'm not gone ones that are way out here and way over here. I want the ones that are just surrounding Mecca, the ones that are close to it, the ones that are neighbors to it, the ones that existed at the time that Abraham existed, the ones that come after Abraham, the ones that existed from the time of Abraham all the way up into the seventh century, all these empires existed. And yet none of them, not one of them has heard of Mecca. Compare this to the fact that Jerusalem was mentioned even at the time of Abraham. Oh, goodness. Damascus is mentioned. Jerusalem right. is mentioned. Aden right. is mentioned. Cairo is mentioned. Oh, it wasn't called Cairo at that time. You can see all of these places are mentioned. Stesiphon is mentioned over here in what is now today Baghdad. Uh, these places are all well referred to, but yet the one city that should be the most important of all these cities, because it's the oldest one, it's the one where the cradle of a civilization began, according to the standard Islamic narrative, right. everything begins with Adam and Eve. According to the Bible, everything begins with Adam and Eve. And if this is the case, Adam and Eve living in Mecca, there should be someone that has, should have known about it. There should be these civilizations that surround it, that have had contact with it. Not one word about Mecca in any of their writings. Absolutely. And this is why we want our viewers to see why we bring uh, these topics up to your attention, because they are really a matter of life or death, especially for our Muslim people. You grew up believing, just like I did, in a prominent town, city, whatever you want to call it, known as Mecca, the center, not just of Islam, but of all of humanity. 
That's where everything started. That's where Adam and Eve met. That's where the foundation were placed in there. That's when Abraham and Ishmael came back also to establish everything, build the Kaaba again. And that's where Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, was born. That's where every Muslim faces daily in their prayer. That's where every Muslim, in at least once in their lifetime, they want to go there to perform pilgrimage, whether it's the minor one or the major one. You see why it's extremely important for us to ask these pointed questions. Anyone ever heard of Mecca, at least during those periods that the standard Islamic narrative is trying to convince us that Mecca was prominent? We get it that now maybe it is, but back then, was Mecca that prominent? And all evidence point to the fact that no one even heard of it. Not to mention it wasn't prominent. No one even heard of it or even took the time to point it in any of the maps that were examined by people like Patricia Crone, for instance, and others. Why? Because it wasn't such a prominent town. Nobody really wanted to waste time talking about something that wasn't that important. And that's why they only focused on a basically important centers, important cities, important towns. And this is why we are bringing this up to your attention for you to go and examine the evidence. That's all we're asking you to do. What's next? Well, remember a few episodes ago, or just maybe two or three episodes ago, we talked about that there's no water. Mm -hmm. this desert. And where there's no water, there's no food. If there's no food, there's no man or woman. If there's no man or woman, there's no towns, no cities, no civilization, no history. Let's go back to this because what Muslims are coming back and they're all saying, hold on, Mr. Smith, you don't know what you're talking about. There is water there. It's called the Zamzam well. The Zamzam well has been there since eternity. It is inexhaustible. This water mm -hmm. supplies all the water for the whole world for Muslims who need it. And so it certainly also supplies the water for Mecca. We're going to unpack that a bit because I'm going to show you what we now know about the Zamzam well. And it's not going to be very comfortable for Muslims listening, but it's going to be great because I love the claims Muslims make. I love the claims the Quran makes. I love the claims a standard Islamic narrative makes because the more they claim, the more they lift and put this place called Mecca up on a pedestal, the higher they get with that pedestal, the easier it is for them to come crashing down. And we're going to do that with the Zamzam well. Here's another hole in the narrative that we're going to do in the next episode. Well, you've heard the man. We've been talking about the book, the man, the place. And now we're focused on the place and one of those uh, damaging, actually, um, issues when it comes to the place is the well. And that's what we will be examining next time. Until then, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel Sierra International and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.